Easy. Awesome job, by the way, Your Majesty. I thought we were watching Scooby Doo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Diablo 4 once again. You could feel the buzz in the air. We are now one day away from the Early Access D4 playtest. And now everybody is all excited to finally get their hands on Diablo 4. Now, unfortunately for me, I will not be taking part for this weekend. Tomorrow I am getting on an airplane and I am flying to Las Vegas for my birthday. I'm gonna celebrate my birthday, St. Patty's, March Madness, and spring break. So it should be a really fun time, but don't worry. I still got some videos planned and made and probably Saturday and Sunday will only be shorts and I'll probably be posting some pictures and then Monday we will be back to our normally scheduled program. But for today, we're going to check out a little D4 before this weekend. Someone sent me this nine minute video, which I promise you I have not watched yet. And they said, does the game look bad? Question mark. OK, and I was like, "Ooh, does the game look bad? Question mark. This is Adventures with the Dev. Nine minutes. Let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh. There it is. Uh, <laughs> like, when is the dev going to die? There you go. <laughs> I'll avenge you, don't worry. Beautiful, disgusting Diablo. Before Adventure Hello, with the Dev. To Adventure with the Dev. I'm Zavin Hartinian. I'm one of the lead game designers on Diablo 4. Hello. And I'm joined today with uh, Bloodshed. We're going to be playing some dungeons. Uh, I decided to go full werewolf with this one. Which build are you playing? Uh, I'll be mixing up a little bleed and some Hammer of the Ancients. And I've also got Iron Maelstrom. What dungeon did you pick today? We're going to be playing through Kordragon Barracks, which is a really cool Knight's Penitent Fortress in Fractured Peaks. What you're seeing here is a. Uh, is it's one of the fortresses of the Knights Penitent. Okay. <laughs> First off, they're sitting on a couch playing co-op, which is cool. Couch co-op's cool. They're using controllers, and I'm going to take a wild guess that they are playing on console. Right? Which is kind of the military arm of the uh, Cathedral of Light from Fractured Peaks. You can see as we kind of move through the space, we're constantly kind of going indoors and outdoors. Uh, some of this was actually inspired by uh, the Ruins of Sacheron dungeon tile set oh, in Diablo nice. 3. Uh, we loved it when we made that. We wanted to try doing something like that again. And you added traps, like in Sacheron also? Yeah, so actually, traps uh, kind of, we went really big on that in Diablo 4. Uh, most traps have secondary effects that players can take advantage of um, whenever they find them. Yeah, so right there, there's a trap. They'll right. get you. No, no. Speaking of Seshron, right? Yeah, I'm, the big pendulums is what I remember from Seshron and uh, trying to use those to attack enemies for me. <laughs> What's one of the favorite things that maybe you helped implement into the game that you're really proud of? Or <laughs> uh, We're not in it right now, but one of the first uh, dungeons that we ever built, the first tile sets we ever made was actually the Crypt. And we did, were like, okay, well, how do we make sure this feels like Diablo? So what we did is we went and played Diablo 1. Um, I love Diablo Played one. through the Crypt, took a screenshot of what that environment looked like and then made it in this engine. That's awesome. So like all they took a little bit from every Diablo game. Yeah, we looked at every single one. Yeah, even the names of some of these monsters, like these these are skeletons, right? But even the names of some of these, we actually went back to Diablo 1, like what do they call it? But anytime we can inject any of that, you know, original feel, that original tone, I'm surprised we haven't um, had a friendly, there it is. As exact, I was about to say, I'm, I'm surprised the ballista hasn't shot us from off screen. And as I said it, it did. right <laughs> there, high corpse, bro. Right It'd there. probably be good to tackle these first, I think. Yeah, yeah. get them off the battlefield. I never noticed before just how huge the AI or the UI is for this game. It's a very big UI. AI. Been playing too many minions. That was like such a transformative monster. It started to really help keep the gameplay spaces distinct. There's a really big difference between a bunch of narrow corridors with walls and a big wide open space if you have a monster like the corpse bow who can shoot you if he can see you. In the beta, is there any like end game goal maybe for people to reach? We're keeping that at uh, level 25 and then obviously they can complete the entirety of act one, which is um, the act that takes place inside Fractured Peaks. Full story mode, the cutscenes, everything? Yep. Oh, nice. Beyond just like, you know, the main campaign, there's uh, multiple strongholds, there's a bunch of dungeons, there's a bunch of side quests on top of that. Each one of those is a little story. I don't know how anybody could play an action RPG on a controller. I know people do it. I know lots of people that can do it. I'm just not built that way. You know, every dungeon that you play, 
uh, you're going to be able to get a legendary aspect, you know, over a hundred of them in the game. We've tried to fill the dungeons with just a bunch of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Even if you run the same one over and over again, you're never going to be sure exactly what the layout is, exactly yeah. where the monsters are. That's There's cool. a bunch of other, you know, neat surprises that can happen. Traps is one of those. Um, we have a bunch of uh, random events that can happen anywhere in any dungeon. Treasure goblins, everyone's favorite. Those are I could see what my buddy was saying. Just visually, as you're talking lighting and shaders and environment and combat. If they are playing this on console, it doesn't look, I mean, just visuals wise, it doesn't look super uh, good. But there's also things like this. You can find little tidbits, tidbits of story that you can kind of listen to as you, as you journey throughout. As the dungeons go up in difficulty, like, are there like different tiers, different rewards? You know, all these, all these dungeons that are kind of like randomly placed in the game. Every single one of those can become a nightmare dungeon okay. at the end of the day. We actually have just like a huge built-in library of endgame content from the get-go. You're going to be able to play all these things, uh, get your aspects uh, early on uh, as you level, get renowned, they'll feed into that too, get even more rewards, and then by the time you hit endgame, you actually have a chance to revisit these dungeons, and when they become nightmare dungeons, they actually pull in a dungeon affixes uh, alongside with them. What's the most affixes you can get in one dungeon? Oh, that actually, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> uh, there's quite a bit. Yeah. It's not like a one and done deal, right? Okay. You start with a couple maybe, but over time that number will increase. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh. There it is. Ah, oh, man. Dead. We did it. Uh, it's like, when is the dev going to die? There you go. I'll avenge you, don't worry. Remember me. <laughs> I'm going to try to res you without getting hit. Ah, make it happen. There we go. Welcome back so that's to the actually world. A, that's actually a very small change we've made. Getting hit one time doesn't immediately break the channel. I thought before. it would. Yeah, that's, I how, that's how it traditionally worked in the past, right? We actually mm -hmm. we actually changed that because we, you know, we played the games too. We're like, mm -hmm. okay, now that guy barely touched me. That shouldn't break my channel. I'm 99% done. Yeah, don't click that yet. It's a greed. Yeah. Greed. Is it though? Sometimes that's a curse shrine. Oh, okay. And you won't know until you click it. Let's, you know, we're gonna roll the dice. I love that it breaks like if you're like in the zone. And, and it won't tell you. It won't say like curse shrine. It's like, uh -huh. That's a greed shrine. I'm gonna click it. Oh, okay. Lucky. Okay. We made it. This one's greed. great. Enemies drop gold when hit. So let's go hit a bunch of things. All right, let's get paid. There it is. The money bill, and then it might push you, especially if you're playing. Retry, it might push you beyond your limits, so to speak, right? Put you in a yes. position that, yes. you're like, do I capitalize on this greed shrine, or do I possibly die? <laughs> By the way, uh, what I said about um, cursed shrines mm -hmm. also true about healing wells. And, and then it could sometimes be... it might be a cursed well. Wow. Let's see. And enemies can pop out. Yep. It actually starts. You just got me on edge actually, on actually, everything now. It I'm actually like... starts an event. Both <laughs> if you of them break do. a door, yeah, you might. Actually, die. no, no, no. <laughs> there's no, there's okay. no mimic doors or anything. All right. Like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but actually, funny enough, uh, monsters can open doors in this game. Really? Yeah. So if That's they can, change, if they right? can see you, they, monsters like, can open doors. Huh? They can just, just they'll just open a door. Throwing firewalls over there. And then how funny is this? We got a shrine, a well, and a chest. Sometimes a cursed chest. So you're like, you don't just click on it. You better be ready. I'm just saying. We try. Curse shrines, cursed health pools, health, cursed chess. Got it. To keep things kind of interesting, we have a whole crew of people on this team who spent an inordinate amount of time uh, making couch co-op as, as awesome as we're feeling right now. Yeah, like we can do everything independently, or yeah. our skills and abilities. I was like, maybe I do have some upgrades here that I'm put in <laughs> now that you mention it. I noticed oh, no. like you just push one button and jumped right in also. Very, very soon, let's logging out, logging back in, switching characters, we can do all those things. All right, let's see where we are. All right. Put some work in. It's a good sized dungeon there. You chose this dungeon. Is there any surprises at the end? Uh, I mean, if I tell Is, you. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that in itself it was a, wouldn't be a surprise then. I guess we'll have to see. I was kind of getting that feeling that there was something here. Blood boils. In the comments section. Is this impressing of, you? Yeah. Yeah, this isn't a good thing. In the comment good. section. <laughs> They just keep spawning. Are you impressed? It. Yeah, I mean, it's those knights. They left a mess. We got to clean it up. Beautiful, disgusting Diablo. As it should be. Yeah. So when you're doing like co-op, can like, and one person wants to go to town, is it, do you have to accept it or can? No, we call it couch justice, right? Couch like if justice. you want to do something and I don't want you to do it and you do it, yeah. I'll just like punch you on oh, the shoulder. Definitely yeah. on a console. Yeah, I noticed earlier, like if I pause it or whatever, the Xbox. game's not box. Nope. Yeah, so. On the dungeons, did you guys have like a target average playtime for a dungeon? Like if I only had You know, we actually tried very, very short, like, you know, 
five minute dungeons. We we built, I think the longest one we tried internally was maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Wow. Um, <laughs> and we kind of figured like, okay, well if we make something kind of reasonably sized, mm -hmm. it can always grow. So when you hit nightmare dungeons, things just get harder and they automatically already get slower. So it takes mm -hmm. longer to do them. Um, but one of the other things that we did is uh, we made cellars in every zone that you can find. And every single time you go inside one of those, they can have a completely different outcome. There's a whole quest line later on in the game that you can find. Okay. Um, that has to do with uh, kind of a major character in the game. Oh man. Um, okay. Uh, and it's, and it's a side is it, quest. Is it going to be in beta? Side quest or like like no, no, no. This is like well beyond, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but point being, it's, it's a it's actually a main character from the campaign that has their own side quest line mm -hmm. that you can go and experience, and that quest line takes you through, you know, two cellars and a dungeon. Not everybody's just going to do everything now. <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. Why is that? Why you gotta do this? Don't worry, dude, we have open beta coming. Everyone's gonna have a chance. They're gonna kill monsters, get loot. It's gonna be great. My name is Bloodshed. I guess I'll see you next time. Yeah, and I'm Zavin Hartunian. Thank you for joining us for Adventure with a Dev, and I'll see you all in hell. Okay. I see why it was sent to me. I totally understand the sentiment that on console, coach, couch co op. That's pretty cool. But yeah, the visuals on Xbox probably aren't going to look as good as on the 4090. Sure as hell better look better than that Xbox console. This is my last Diablo video until really every question we have will likely be answered. I said it during the video. I just want to know. Was watching this adventure with the dev impressive to you? I'll see you all on Monday. Wish me luck in Viva Las Vegas. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out. Thank you.